Hello and welcome back to our YouTube channel Tunashi Katuka Nyakati Ngumu Research Perspectives. For those of you who have not heard the last two episodes, my name is Rachel Main and I am an honours student studying urban and regional development at the University of Witwatersrand in, South Af in Johannesburg, South Africa. This video is chapter two of my podcast series that will be exploring the topic, what if the city were human? The last session ended on an intense topic that is that we as planners are the advocates for those who suffer from past injustices, social inequality, economic inequality, poor living conditions and more. This is why today's podcast title is The People Are The City. And in this session, I'll be diving into why planners are advocates, how planners plan for the people and some challenges urban planners face. Today's podcast is part one of two parts where I'll be discussing the need for urban planners to plan the city for the people. In the past, urban plan the urban planning profession often did not strive for the same goals as it does today. In fact, the profession had a long history in creating socially unjust and unequal cities where group, certain groups within society were viewed as superior. A strong example of this is the elitist planning process of South African cities that were designed under the regime of apartheid. Apartheid planning's fundamental objective was to racially segregate the population and to ensure that the black population was both socially and economically unequal to the white. The state's control over the rate and pattern of urban growth during apartheid has greatly affected and continues to affect the ability of South African planners to achieve socio-economic just cities. This is because there is more to achieving social cohesion than implementation of appropriate initiatives. This requires trust, trust in the planning profession. However, there tends to be a massive distrust between the public and the planners. A large part of this distrust is due to the fact that in recent past, the production of space has more often created various forms of injustices. Which I find quite ironic since the two main purposes of the planning profession in society is to design and regulate the use of land and also to create cities of equal social and economic opportunity for the residents of that space. Trust in the planning profession is difficult to define. I would say that trust in the profession is the urban planner's ability and capacity to commit oneself to fulfilling the expectations of society and contractual obligations. However, even in, if the planner does live up to this expectation, it does not mean that the people automatically have trust in the profession. In fact, past experiences have proved otherwise. The notion of trust is one that is very complicated. Trust is like a piece of paper, and once that piece of paper has been crumpled up, it will never be the same, no matter how hard we try to flatten it out and smooth out the wrinkles. It is increasingly more difficult to create a relationship built on trust when the people have continuously been exposed to poor planning initiatives, elitist planning strategies, profit-orientated initiatives, and much more like the South African population has. The trust, or rather the distrust within the planning profession is seen in both the processes and the rationale of the profession. Stack plans rules on the identification of planning profession work that was submitted for comment in the year 2020 has a strong focus on restoring the trust in the planning profession Section 6 of SAC Plan's rules is important for planning profession as it would result in the restoration of trust in the planning profession when planners act with integrity, honesty, competence, openness, reliability and fairness. 
These rules and the shift from within the planning profession towards planning for the underprivileged, marginalized and exploited groups should in theory regain some trust in the profession. Another step in restoring the trust within the urban planning profession is by providing clear roles and responsibilities for planners and also by having minimum requirements for people to be able to take up these roles and responsibilities, where this coherency and ability should not allow for uncertainty to develop from the perspective of the public. Since the early 20th century, there has been a shift in the planning profession where planners no longer only serve those that can afford their services, but also have to serve the in the public's interest. The field of planning was dominated by technical experts and rational theories that did not allow for the public engagement However, planners took a more supportive role in becoming advocates for individuals and groups who did not have access to social and economic opportunity. This has led to the changes in the planning practice where public participation has become a significant tool in all planning processes and steps. This shift has changed the way in which planners transform the city. Planners no longer view the physical aspects of the city in isolation to the social implications of the city. Planners no longer use the change of space to create socially inclusive cities, but rather use public participation and principles of spatial and social justice to plan for space. The people have now become the city. Public participation is a process that is used to make sure that general public have a say in the running of affairs. This happened after the members of society desired to determine their own future. The term public participation can be defined as any process that directly engages with the public in decision making and considers the inputs of the public when making the final decision. Meaningful public participation involves the inputs of all stakeholders, regardless of their race, age, income, and more. The stakeholder input regarding the development, implementation, and decisions made through the process of public participation will then need to be reviewed by an unbiased media mediator that will then make a decision that reflects the views and concerns made throughout the process. Public participation is an important process to all urban planning initiatives. However, the process of public participation in the urban planning field has been criticised for not being very effective. The ideology of community participation is traced back to the 18th century and encompassed the hope that each individual in society is aware and has access to existing opportunities. The process of public participation is aimed at reducing unnecessary waste of resources in terms of physical resources such as money and natural resources, but also in terms of wasting human potential. By excluding portions of the population, we are essentially shutting down the opportunity to teach, learn and communicate with those individuals. Public and community participation processes can be used one of two ways. The first way is as an end in a bottom-up decision-making process. This type of participation is what was intended, where the objective of this is to increase the people's control over resources and regulations. It leads to the people taking control of their own decisions and futures and are allowed to make their contributions in the design, implementation, regulation, and maintenance of urban planning initiatives. The second type of public participation is when urban planning processes use public interest as a means to nudge people's decision-making to the predetermined objectives through what is called choice architecture. Choice architecture is a top-down approach which generally uses manipulative techniques to create groupthink and makes the choice 
feel delivered, conscious, and that of the individual. The manipulation of the process of public participation has led to an enclave of gated democracy, where planning initiatives still continue to serve portions of the population that do not require upliftment, and when in theory public participation should be used as a tool to advocate for the poor, marginalised and vulnerable. For meaning public participation of stakeholders in urban planning initiatives, there needs to be transparency between the parties affected to ensure that everyone has equal access to information that could be used to protect their own interests. The urban planners also need to be transparent and honest with the stakeholders as a step to restore trust in the profession. Because public participation involves the input of multiple stakeholders, the process requires efficient management by urban planners so that the involvement occurs during every step and or phase in the planning process. The use of a universal design in the public partic participation process is vitally ensuring participation is equal. City planners in South Africa need to utilise public participation as a means to rectify past injustices that are sewn into the form of most cities in the country. Since the fall of apartheid, the cities in South Africa experience increasing rates of urbanisation because cities carry the potential for individuals to become financially stable. However, this massive influx of people has led to the growth of informality and people being forced into slum conditions. It is because of these informal and poor living conditions and South Africa's history of high levels of state authoritarianism that public participation is crucial in all planning processes and has provided the foundation for making South Africa a democratic country. Public participation in planning profession plans space for people because people are the city. A city without the people is just a bunch of buildings. Planners are advocates for the poor, marginalised and vulnerable. This is a sentence that I have read or heard a thousand times since I started studying urban and regional development. And it is also something that I, as a planner, hope to accomplish in my career. I don't know if it is because it has been drilled into our heads that it is our responsibility to plan cities and spaces that are inclusive and safe. Or maybe it is just because I have that calling I spoke about in Chapter 1 of my podcast series. I do not know why I personally view planners as the advocates and the activists for those with no voice. But I am glad I do. I think the only thing getting me through this degree is the hope of making a change in someone's life or in many people's lives. And that is it for today. Thank you for listening and feel free to engage in the comment section. Also, please do not forget to hit that subscribe button below and like the video. Just a reminder that these podcast videos are a requirement to fulfill my degree and therefore it is important for me to acknowledge the work and theories I use to create the videos and podcast content. And these are listed below.